Hey everyone, welcome back for video three in this series where we're exploring how to use Spark within Microsoft Fabric. And now we're getting into the nitty gritty of things. And we're gonna be going through today the components of Spark. So in my last video, I gave you a bit of an overview of why Spark is important. And now we're gonna be focusing on, okay, what is Spark? What are the components of Spark and how we can use it? So if you go onto their website, you can see that it's broken into various libraries. We've got the SQL and data frames section of the kind of the API. We've got Spark Streaming, MLlib for machine learning, and GraphX. So what I'm gonna be doing is just talking you through this little diagram here and explaining how each of these work and how we can use each of them in Fabric. And across the bottom, you can see we have Spark Core and the Spark SQL Engine. And we can interact with this Spark Core and Spark SQL Engine with, in traditional Spark, with five languages. So Scala, SQL, Python, Java, and R. But in Microsoft Fabric, when we're writing our notebooks, we can see along the bottom here that we can use these languages. So only Python, Scala, SQL, and R. So we can access the Spark kind of API in these four languages, okay? Not in Java. And then on top of the core of Spark, we have four different libraries. And these are Spark SQL and data frames, Spark Streaming, Machine Learning with MLlib, and Graph Processing with GraphX. So Spark SQL, as the name suggests, is kind of like the core construct, at least for most applications using Spark. So we can do tabular data, we can do very large tabular data sets, obviously. And the data frame API is very similar and it's inspired a lot by Pandas. So if you've used Pandas data frames, they're very similar. And for the first kind of 10 videos of this course, we're gonna be focusing on Spark SQL and data frames because they're kind of like the really the most used part of Spark for most people. We also have Spark Streaming, and in this course, I'm not gonna be touching on Spark Streaming, but perhaps in the future, if that's something that you're interested in, then I can add that in. Of course, in Microsoft Fabric, we have real-time analytics in the kind of the custo KQL. You can also hook into Azure Event Hubs. So there is quite a lot of real-time streaming stuff in Fabric already. So there's kind of two ways to do streaming in Fabric. So maybe we'll compare those two in a future video. Machine learning with MLlib. Well, this is at the right at the heart of the data science experience. It's one of the libraries we can use to do machine learning within Microsoft Fabric. There's a number of others. We can use Synapse ML as well, is the kind of the Microsoft tool that's available to us. So we're gonna be doing three videos on MLlib in this series. Graph processing is, as the name suggests, for analyzing, creating graphs and performing calculations on these graphs in a distributed manner. So all of these libraries work on distributed data sets, but we don't have to manage that as such as kind of fabric engineers. A lot of that in the most cases is done for us right in the kind of the really advanced section of this course, I'm gonna be talking about how you customize how we do different pooling. This video is just a brief overview of the structure of Spark, the different components, just so that you're aware that this is what we have to play with. And in this course, we're gonna be focusing on Python and the Spark SQL and data frames for most of it, as well as machine learning for a few videos as well. So I hope you found that interesting and useful and this notebook, as well as all the other notebooks, are available in the GitHub, github.com forward slash learn Microsoft Fabric, so you can follow along with this series. And make sure you leave a comment if you've got any comments or anything's not clear, and like and subscribe. And I'll see you tomorrow for the next one.